Thanks for clicking. Um, my name is Jason Moore. I am the Director of Cloud Operations at Wonderlic Malik. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about space ops. And what is space ops? It sounds really cool, like maybe there's some orbital navigation or launching involved. There's not. It's space optimization in office buildings, retail buildings. Um, there's a portfolio management aspect that says, hey, how occupied is my building at any given time? Do I need to add more space? Um, is there uh, enough space available for employee experience to be high, uh, happy employees or productive employees? And then there's hot desking, which is kind of a, a new desk every day or a new desk depending on the role or the department you're interacting with and the ability to reserve them. And while Space Ops does reserve desks, um, it does collect the data on the desks and then can mark them as reserved. Um, from a security application, it is secure. Uh, and the mobile application to require to reserve a desk would be an API connection to it. So it's separate from that by intention and not necessarily omission. Um, we've done this for a customer to be able to manage their portfolio. And what we thought would be a neat thing is to do a video series on it, um, a three part. And the first part we're gonna do is this one, where we talk about why, um, both from a user perspective, uh, end user perspective, a customer perspective, if you will. And from a Wonderlic Malik perspective, uh, Wonderlic Malik is known for uh, industrial automation. And you might ask why it was Wonderlic Malik doing an IoT project based around retail space. Well, the short answer is that it's sensor data from the edge through a gateway to a cloud, the same as we've been doing for 40 some odd years um, with other manufacturing execution systems, ERP systems, uh, various other things, CMMS systems. So for this, the processes are that different some of the tools are but we'll walk through that and and in one of the sections in this video we'll get into even more deeper detail of why Wonderlic Malik is doing this and why it's a, a, a focus for us to be a forerunner in IOT technology and implementation the second part will be from the development engineer uh, on the Wonderlic Malik team and we thought that would draw contrast to other industrial automation engineers and how they perceive uh, IoT in the cloud and, and how they tra he transitioned his experience from pretty traditional industrial automation to this IoT-based project. And the third will bring in our partners, uh, the sensor partners, the uh, cloud partners and the gateway partners to really discuss uh, in detail the tech stack, how we did it. And our goal here is to educate um, both internally to the rest of Wonderlic Malik and externally to other industry experts, other co potential customers to really share the knowledge. Because I think that uh, our rising tide, which is the fourth industrial revolution or fifth industrial revolution, or, or just IoT in general, a rising tide raises all boats. So we want everybody to be successful at these things so that it gets adopted quickly because it really does have a ton of value and poorly implemented projects only detract from that. So instead of sharing you know, secret sauce or stuff like that, we want to share basic principles and say, hey, how do we improve the industry as a whole? So with that, we'll jump into some of the details first around customer why did the customer do this? Let's talk now about the major use cases or value propositions for uh, space ops or occupancy management in uh, retail and commercial. Uh, first really starts with optimization. Uh, is your building being used optimally? Are the densities of employees correct? Uh, nextly is transforming your portfolio management, uh, taking it from uh, maybe card reader up front, how many people assign through HR to the building or what have you, to really knowing what areas are occupied, what desks are occupied, what conference rooms are occupied. And that has to add fidelity to your portfolio planning. Um, then let's talk about return to work, whether it's COVID return to work, pandemic or emergency situation return to work. 
This can be handled with occupancy sensing to make sure that the limits are safe uh, under any kind of abnormal situations. And, and as we all know from recent experience, um, occupancy and the how many people we put in a space changed and it changed rapidly. And we needed, we would have benefited from real time data at that point. So I think this is a huge boon to that. And, and lastly, workplace experience. The idea of hot desking or reserving a seat or for functional teams, cross-functional teams from different departments to be hot desk together to increase their productivity, even if it's for a short time. Maybe there's a, a six week period where you've got two teams that normally don't work together working together. You can bring those teams together in a hot desking situation. Through occupancy, you can also make sure that services, cleaning services, catering services, whatever the case may be, get focused where they're needed because based on occupancy and curtailed more in spaces that are less occupied. And it really offers a real-time planning and management aspect to buildings that just hasn't existed before. Let's talk about how occupancy and occupancy monitoring is changing the industry today and what we've seen through our research and our interaction with customers is that more and more owners are redesigning spaces around occupancy, around cross-functional teams in collaborative areas that support hot desking. They're making the physical alterations to the buildings to be able to do this type of uh, employee experience improvement and having real-time data only magnifies its impact. Based on the pandemic that we've experienced, we know that hybrid workforce is the new norm. Sometime at home, sometime in the office, that's here to stay, I think. And having a real-time occupancy planning thing that can make use of, of hot desking to support different periods of time when different groups are in the office and make the most of the consolidating space that you can with this hybrid workforce. I think real-time data is pivotal in. When it comes to portfolio planning, utilization is key. It is the one metric that everybody looks at and they collect the data in different ways. Uh, but I think we can all agree real-time utilization is the most accurate and probably the most up-to-date be able to pump that into any number of business intelligence tools because it's collected in a format independent database in the cloud, I think opens the possibilities to use BI tools that are already there, third party tools that specialize in the application of AI to utilization, um, having the platform that delivers the data to that data lake is what space ops is all about. From the design and planning of this, the technology part has always been at the forefront of real-time occupancy. The idea that you have to make it platform independent, sensor independent, use things that enable agility in the end users to change to different sensors or a different sensor manufacturer or to integrate new and emerging trends once their internet of things, the IoT infrastructure is in place. Uh, is is paramount in any design and I think planners are starting to catch on to that and I know I know we are and that's why we chose things like MQTT and various industry standards parquet for data storage um, it was definitely an easy uh, trend to read and and certainly a value prop that we knew we had to hit let's answer the question why wonder if Malik decided to do a commercial IOT project when we're clearly at experts at industrial engineering well in reality it's it's edge to enterprise or edge to cloud which we do every day all day long now in just a different format and for a different set of controllers or sensors at the edge so we're we think we have the chops to do it we have the expertise to do it and the challenge was there and it was a good challenge and if you get right down to it our our mission statement with the Wonder Tech family within Wonder Like Malik, we want to accelerate our customer success. We want to take these skills that we have and leverage them to uh, both rewards and also to uh, help our customers achieve things. Because 
Our continued success is based on their success. Um, we have a, uh, a statistic that I couldn't be more proud of is that 67% of our business comes from repeat customers year over year over year. And I think that says something to our employee owners on the job they're doing, helping our customers realize that we're committed to their continued success. We have to deliver the same continuously quality of service on today's technologies, tomorrow's technologies, and beyond. It's honestly evolve or die. Lastly, with why Wonderlic Malik would take on an IoT project in the commercial space, the truth of the matter is, is that even the most conservative industry trends are predicting a massive increase in spending and value benefit from IoT going forward. We think this validates the vision that this is a core competency that we will have to have in the years to come. So we're making the investment now to get that competency and to build the department that delivers it and then expand that to all business units, all geographical locations within Wonderlic Malik. Now we get to what I personally think is the fun part. Uh, that is why technically, why IoT is the future of industrial automation and what that kind of looks like. And, and change excites me, um, terrifies me too, uh, keeps me up at night, uh, but this is truly what I live for. This is the thing that, that gets my motor going, digs in my heels, uh, gets me to inspire the team that I'm working with, and, and really, it's what keeps me coming back. First, let's talk about some of the most popular uses of IoT and industrial automation. And, and those are, are pretty simple and pretty well known, so I don't um, want to feel like I'm covering well-tread ground here, but predictive maintenance, supply chain automation, building management systems, industrial process automation improvements, remote error detection. These are the tenets. These are the, these are the big five that I think are on everybody's mind and that they've seen, uh, talked about internally, um, even gone out and done some pilots on. And, and that's one of the things that I think is more important now than ever is that pilots in IoT should be less expensive than your traditional pilots in automation because we're using wireless technologies. We're sending stuff to scalable clouds so it doesn't require a, a, a data center or a server farm to collect the data. Uh, I think pilots are the, the one of the keys going forward. We'll probably get into that in some future episode. With IoT, the idea to bring data from the edge into the cloud, then back to the enterprise is an idea that's going to involve or an effort that's going to involve a lot of IT assistance. And since we're talking about cloud and we're talking about gateways and we're talking things like cybersecurity, IT is more involved than ever in OT, operational technology and informational technology. And they've kind of worked together over the years but I think more so now and even more so in the future, they're really going to combine. And a lot of the trailblazers in a lot of the things we talked about is the IT world. They've set the standards. They have the best practices already. They're familiar with different terms like software lifecycle, uh, cybersecurity attack profiles, DevOps, agile, modified agile staging environments and automated testing. These are all words that to those in the industrial automation side of the world may be foreign, but for IT, there's something they discuss on an everyday basis and on a weekly basis. And so we've got to figure out how to work within those things. And there's a good reason we should figure that out. And I think there's a DevOps series coming up as well, industrial automation and DevOps then I hope you tune back in for it. Ultimately, the enterprise connectivity will dictate things from IT about what security profiles are in use, what security practices are in use, uh, what transport protocols and what encryption keys are used. 
Uh, what kind of pen testing is done against the solution? Uh, what is the data format stored in? What kind of APIs are available for third party or, or other BI tools that are going to be used? Uh, IT more so than ever is going to be integral to these OT based projects. And as the OT representatives, we have to get up to speed on, on what's being talked about in the IT realm. Thanks for taking an interest in Space Ops. And we'll be back with part two, where we invite Bruce Powell, who was our lead engineer on Space Ops, uh, to the table here in the media studio, and then we'll figure it out. And then for part three, we'll bring the vendors in. Part three will probably be uh, a, a Teams meeting or some other collaboration tool um, as they're scattered around the country. Uh, but please tune in for those. I think they're both exciting uh, and both educational. Um, and remember, if you like this kind of content from one of the mail, like, I, I got to ask that you click like and subscribe. And it lets the management team know that people are watching this and that there's value in it. And so please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Jason Moore.